Hey guys, Mitch here. Uh, so I got something pretty cool to show you today. Um, I'm calling it the VR content examples and there's only so much I can show in like a 20 to 30 minute window that is my videos. So the idea behind this is to take those techniques that I teach you in the videos and spend a few more hours or days on it and then show you what can be capable with just a little bit more time put into the same techniques. So I've got, got a lot to cover so I'll just dive straight into it. Um, the first level I have is the trace interaction and basically what this is is it's uh, the look interaction and the teleportation that I've done in previous videos all combined into one big system and encompasses cool things like uh, menus and web browsers and advanced teleportation things. Uh, so I'm just going to jump straight into it and I'll just give you a little sh uh, showdown of what how things work and then I'll go a little bit further into the tech behind it. Okay. So um, here we have a menu system and it's got a cool couple of components just off the bat. Um, so we have this uh, menu item or this like list view here and basically what that has is it has active states so you can see as I click on these they'll activate the one, two, three, and four and it also has a uh, hover and unhover events as well. And so if you see if I click on this first item I have a blueprint set up where it uh, prints something just when I click on that first item which is pretty cool. There's a, another core component, which is the, bu these buttons down here, the properties that um, you probably should be aware of. So it bubbles, and if you've done any kind of uh, web interaction programming and stuff like that, it's a similar concept where I hover over this back button here, and this hover state activates. But if I hover over this button, the uh, back button no longer is hovered because uh, this smaller button doesn't uh, propagate its uh, hover state over to the back button. But I have a setup on this button here that when it's hovered, the back button will also be hovered because it propagates it or bubbles its uh, events outwards, which is pretty cool. And so um, this one here will just be hover. So if I click on it, you notice that the back button doesn't click. But if I click on this one, it won't click. But this fast, one, this last one, sorry, uh, has full bubbling enabled. So then if I click on that, it'll click on this button and the button behind it, which will. Uh, spawn some fire which is pretty cool okay let's just go in a little bit behind the scenes of how those uh, menu system works it's pretty um, modular so if i just open up this uh, widget i can grab it here and we've got a basic in-game menu which is what this is and you can see the components um, you'll see that uh, umg doesn't update the components live that's just a bug with umg and hopefully gets fixed in the future but um, as you can see i have this uh, trace menu which is uh, of type, if I go down here, trace table, which is a custom uh, UMG widget that I've created that handles uh, trace input and stuff like that. And so um, under appearance, you see uh, columns. And so here I can actually adjust how many columns I want this uh, menu to have. So if I just go to and hit save and compile and hit play again, you notice that our menu is now more like a grid, stru grid structure and it works just like before. I can click on one and it still prints and stuff like that. Um, so if you want to add things to the menu, all we need to go down is grab the table items, click the plus button, and then we can change whatever text we want to be uh, se uh, seven. We got the padding and stuff like that, so we can do like 10, 10, change its height. So this last element, we want to be a lot bigger. So we say it's a hundred and we just hit save and compile and then play. And you see, we got a last element here, it's got more padding, and it's also a lot bigger, which is pretty cool. And so these buttons are similar, so if I just go back into the menu, and here we can just set the button appearance and stuff like that, we can adjust its padding, its text, uh, text appearance, and then whether it bubbles or not. Um, you can also, if I go down to the very bottom, uh, see it has the vents just like any other button in UMG like on clicked and stuff like that So if I hit here, you see that on click this button just changes its text value, which is pretty cool um, There's also one other way we can interact with things So every UMG widget here has its own has an enclosing uh, Blueprint that uh, acts as the actor where we actually put it in the world And so if I edit this and we'll see this blueprint uh, Just grab an event graph and so you see it has a widget component, which is our menu. So if I go here, uh, where are we? There we go. That's our menu. But um, it also has some cool things where we can interact with the menu. So basically, once we have a menu widget, 
uh, I have an interface fun function called uh, get widget by name. And basically what this does is it'll return a widget by that name we provide it. So if I go uh, back into this in-game menu, you notice that this button here has the name button. So I'm getting that button by name and then I'm casting to its type and I know it's a trace button because I've set it up properly, so that's a safe cast, and then I can bind to its onClick property. So this onClick property um, is called whenever the button is clicked, and so that's just an easy way to get events from the menu widget back into Blueprints, which is pretty cool. Another cool thing is uh, this uh, trace menu has a similar thing. So if I see here, I have we got its trace menu from this name, and then I've cast to the trace table, which is the type it is, and then bind to its on clicked property. And the trace menu's clicked property actually returns as a value um, the item that was clicked on. So you see, I'm just seeing which item is clicked on, checking if its text is equal to one, and then I'll print that string. And that's how, when we click on this first item here, um, the string is printed from Blueprint which that's just an easy way to get um, functionality from widgets into Blueprints. All right, so over here on the right, we have a web browser. A uh, quick note before I do much with the web browser, it's really, really hacky. So it um, uses uh, Unreal's inbuilt web browser, which is cool because there's no plugins required, um, but the API isn't quite there yet. There's, so there's a lot of hacks to run uh, custom JavaScript and stuff. Uh, the real demonstration here is just showing off the keyboard. So here you see you got my YouTube channel, cool. Um, you play videos and stuff. I'm just going to show you the keyboard. So if I click on this search bar, I can type in, I don't know, uh, let's see if it's working yet. Mitch. Oh, it's going to take a while. Okay. Niches the lab. Okay. Enter. Cool. Yeah. So you see that works. It's pretty nice. Um, let me just flip it back out. Yeah. And that's just the keyboard component. It's pretty modular. You can chuck it on any blueprint you want and you got a functioning keyboard. Okay. Moving on to more uh, things. We have uh, the teleportation things. These are similar to like ones I've uh, used in previous videos. If I go here and just rotate this camera around, uh, you'll see I have this teleport volume, which uh, if you've seen my other videos, it's just a basic queue we can teleport onto, which is neat. Pretty simple to do, but uh, not very useful. You have rough terrain or something like that. Uh, what else? We have this teleport node, which is like a singular node, but you can only teleport to its location. Um, so let's click here, you can see teleport to it, and I can teleport back. Yeah. And then this last one is actually really cool. So what it is, is it's a teleport area. And I'll just hit play and show you what it does. So you see this, we have this custom defined area, which I can teleport anywhere on here, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, but the cool thing about it is how it works. So I've kind of done all the hard mathy stuff and made it so uh, all you need to do is grab these spline points and drag them around and it'll do everything for you. So if I just click back on it, I can add a new spline point here, drag it out and it uh, updates the mesh in real time. And so basically what I'm doing in the back end is I'll take all these spline points, I will triangulate it into a mesh, chuck that into a procedural mesh component, uh, do the automatic uh, UV unwrapping and stuff like that and then uh, project it into the grid, which is pretty cool. And so basically all you have to do is uh, grab here and just chuck, I want to say, say I want to visualize it. And then you can grab any of these points and just drag them about. And you have your teleportation grid, which is pretty cool. It's just a really simple way to define uh, non-regular meshes and stuff like that. Instead of just a simple box, we can use whatever shape we want. But yeah, that's a little overview of the example content. Um, I'm planning to have a few more videos on it, just going a little bit more in depth of how to set up like complex menu systems or and try maybe an overview of how uh, this component works. It's pretty complex, but um, I'll try and break it down for you guys. Oh, and um, I'm planning to put this uh, up on GitHub and so then you guys can make pull requests and changes and stuff like that and make it really more of a community focused project uh, than the uh, videos are, which would be pretty cool. 
Um, so if you like that idea, just kind of let me know. And if you have any other ideas, yeah, just leave them below.